Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And uh, what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the host, which is actually uh, either could be of prokaryotic uh, in nature or eukaryotic in nature. Uh, in continuing to the same discussion, we have also discussed about the different uh, types of uh, media compositions, what we can use for uh, culturing these. Uh, host strains. Uh, so, what we have discussed, we have discussed about the microbial media and in the microbial media we have discussed about the defined media or the standard media which is like uh, defined media. In, in the defined media what we have discussed, we have discussed about the M9 and the M9 like media where the salt and the other compositions are uh, uh, already known and there is no uh, mi complex mixture what you are using. Whereas, in the case of uh, the uh, other kind of media such as the uh, LB media, you have the different components which are actually having the mixture of different uh, extracts and because of that it uh, cannot be uh, fine tuned or controlled. Uh, similarly, we have discussed about the yeast media, the media what you can use to propagate the yeast and uh, we have also discussed about the uh, mammalian cell culture media. And in the uh, previous uh, chapter uh, lecture what we have also discussed or what we have uh, uh, shown you is how to prepare the microbiology media as well as the mammalian cell culture media. So, the purpose of discussing these media is because you want to grow the host cells and you want to grow the host cells so that their number will grow and they also should go through with the different stages of their life cycle or the cell cycle. And uh, uh, because uh, uh, for the biotechnology related uh, production, sometime the, uh, uh, the, uh, the molecules or sometime the organisms are uh, over expressing or uh, uh, giving the particular type of uh, uh, bio bio biotechnologically relevant products at a particular, uh, particular stage of the uh, host. Or sometime what happen is the particular st stage of the host is important for receiving the uh, transforming agents such as the plasmids. And that is why it is important to discuss the, uh, the how to study the, uh, the, uh, the uh, growth of the microbial or the mammalian system. So, when we say about the growth of the microbial system, we we will talk about the growth in terms of two ways. So, growth can be growth can be of two types, one in which the bacteria is increasing their number. So, growth could be that where the bacteria is increasing its number or growth is where the bacteria is going through with the different stages of the cell cycle or the life cycle. So, if you would like to grow the bacteria, you have the two options, one in which you can do a inoculation of the bacteria into the liquid media. So, the inoculation you can do in the liquid media or you can do the spreading or the plating which is actually in the solid media. So, depending on the kind of bacteria what you are growing or whatever whatever is preferable uh, conditions, you can use the inoculation techniques to inoculate the bacteria into a liquid media or you can use the spreading or the plating techniques to plate the bacterial colonies on a solid media. In some cases, both of these techniques are being used 
uh, uh, for different purposes. For example, when you do the inoculation in the liquid media, you would like to grow the bacteria in a very large number. Whereas, sometime when you would like to isolate a particular type of bacteria, then what you do is you take the mixture of that particular bacteria and spread it onto a solid media. And if you remember, in our previous lecture, we have discussed that if you would like to make a solid media, you can add the gelling agent such as the agar into the media and that will give you the solid uh, media. And if you make the solid media, the bacteria will grow on that solid media and you can be able to isolate a particular type of bacteria using these techniques. So, there are different uh, modes or different methods by which the bacterial cells uh, grow in the uh, grow uh, and increase their number. So, let us see what are the different methods are available for bacteria to grow. Uh, so, the, there are different modes of bacteria for cell division. One is called binary division. The binary division where the uh, cell is going to divide into two and that is how the one uh, if the if you start with the uh, one bacteria it will become 2, 4, 8 and uh, and so on with every binary division and then you have the budding where a small part of the bacterial cell is going to be pinched off along with the genetic material and that is how it, uh, it is going to do the budding. Then in the fragmentation part what you are going to do is the fragmentation is for the all those bacteria which are filamentous in nature. So, their filamentous body is getting broken down into multiple pieces and all these multiple pieces are again regrowing and giving the individual cells. And at the end you have the spore formation. So, in the spore formation is actually a condition which is uh, very much linked to the, uh, to the uh, adverse climate and uh, what happen is that if the climate is not very suitable, the bacteria is preferring to make the spores instead of uh, instead of increasing its number. And once the climate is favorable, then these spores are regrowing and giving you giving the new individuals. So let's discuss uh, how these uh, different uh, cell division occurs in the bacterial cell. But before that, as I, as we discussed also that. The studying the growth of a microorganism is important because it allows you to do the ex to, to exploit the microflora for the production of desired product. As we discussed, there are uh, there are bacteria which actually produces the uh, some uh, uh, the products only when they attained a particular phase of the phase of their life cycle or when they attained a particular stage in their uh, developmental stage. Similarly. Uh, uh, this is also important because of the economical as well as the uh, if you want to study the uh, the effect of a particular growth constituents in onto the production of the uh, metabolites or the production of that meta that biotechnology related product from those microbial sources. So let's discuss what are the different modes of bacterial cell division. So let's start with the binary division. As we discussed, binary division is the most common type of cell division in bacteria. Uh, in this division, what happen is that a one cell in this mode, the cell division, a single bacteria cells grow transversely with the synthesis of the chromosomal DNA. So, what will happen is that single cell which is actually uh, having the chromosomal DNA, uh, the uh, replicates in the transversely and once it, re once it replicates, it also doubles its uh, genomic contents. What you can see is you have one genome like this, you have another genome like this and then once it grows the genome, then you are going to have the two copies of the genomic DNA. One is in, in this cell, the other one is in the, this part and then the, there is a transverse uh, furrow which actually divides this particular bacteria into the two cells. So, you got from the one single mother cell, you are going to get the two daughter cells, one is this and the one is this and that is how it actually at the end of the binary fusion, the one bacteria is going to get converted into two bacteria and if you continue like this, the two bacteria will continue to give you four and so on. So, actually the binary division is going to give you the duplication of bacterial cells 
uh, as the number of like, cycle will continue. And once you have the daughter cells, these daughter cells will again grow and then they will synthesize the proteins and other biomolecules which they need to run their metabolism. Let us move on to the next one. So, the next one is called as the budding. As the name suggests, in the budding you have a mother cell which is actually the parent cells or which is the starting material. In the budding what you have is the, the genome is uh, going to uh, re replicate and then it get into one corner of the cell and that corner of the cell get buds out into a form of a bud and eventually what happen is this bud get pinched off from the main cell and that is how it actually generates a daughter cell as well as the mother cell remains like that and then the daughter cell uh, again grow and give you the two new cells. So, the uh, at the end of the binary fusion uh, budding also, you are also going to see that the one cell which is the mother cell is getting converted into two cell. So, as I said you know in this mode of cell division, the chromosomal DNA divides to form two copies. Sister chromo chromosomal DNA moves to one side of the cell and this portion of the cell protrude in from the main body to form the bud and eventually the bud grows in size and gets separated from the main cell uh, in the form of a new cell. Now the, the fragmentation, so as I said in the, uh, in the beginning that the fragmentation is very specific to few class of bacteria which are filamentous bacteria and these filamentous bacteria, uh, their filamentous body is getting broken down into multiple pieces and these multiple pieces are then growing into the individual cells. So, you can imagine that you have a bacteria which is growing like this in the form of the uh, uh, in the form of a uh, filament and then what happen is this filament is going to be broken down at multiple places. So, every filament is having the nucleus in the center and then what will happen is all these are going to form the individual bodies and that is how the filamentous bacteria is going to uh, form the individual bodies. So, all these fragments are going to grow and give the individual cells. Again these cells will again grow in the form of filaments and they will give the new bacteria. Uh, as I as it, as it, as it is given, in this mode of the bacterial replication, filament of the growing cell gets fragmented into the small basilary or cocoid cells. These cellular fragments eventually develop into the new cell. So, these are the few selected, these are the modes in which through which the bacterial cell can uh, divide and replicate into the uh, into uh, into the uh, given media, but the bacteria can, uh, but the question comes if they are growing in their number and uh, how you are, how you could be able to monitor the growth of a bacteria in a uh, in a in a given media. So, what I am trying to say is suppose you started with one bacteria, then eventually it will form two bacteria and the two bacteria will form the four bacteria like. So, how you can monitor this that your what, whatever the media you are using is actually supporting the growth of the bacterial cells and giving you an increase in number. So, what are the methods are available for monitoring the growth of a bacteria in a uh, in a media. So, you have the different methods for measuring the microbial growth. What are these methods? You have the microscopic methods where you can use a microscope and you can use a microscopic chamber to count the number of bacteria in the given, uh, given particular area. Then you have the plate counting method. In plate counting method what you can do is you can plate the cells or you can plate the bacteria on a plate and then you can count the, uh, the number of colonies what you are getting in a plate and that actually indirectly you can use a conversion factor to calculate the number of bacteria which are present in, in your given solution. 
Then you can also use the serial dilution method and in the serial dilution method what you can do is you can dilute the bacterial colonies in a liquid media and then eventually you can use the plate counting method to count the number of, number of bacteria present in your diluted media. You can also use the turbodilatric method, turbodilatric method actually utilizes the, uh, uh, the uh, physical, uh, physical properties of a bacteria. So, you know the bacteria is actually growing in a media and it is giving, it is scattering the cells. So, that actually provides the turbidity in the media and that turbidity can be measured using the different, uh, using the spectrophotometer and that can be correlated with the number of bacteria which are present in a given media. Then you can also use the nitrogen content or the dry or the fresh weight content as well to measure the number of bacteria which are present in a given, uh, uh, given media or given uh, solution. So, let us start with the microscopic count. So, in a microscopic count what you need is you need a cell counter and this is this this is a specific cell counter which is called as the petroff hauser uh, counting chamber what you have is you have a uh, a chamber in the center and where you can actually put the cells and the these counter these chambers have a square which is actually of a size of 1 is to 400 millimeter square and it gives the equivalent volume so, what you have to do is you have to put the bacteria in this particular chamber and on top of that you have to put a glass light so that you they, they will form they will be evenly distributed into this chamber and the bacterial suspension will be filled into this chamber and then what you do is you check you check you uh, and as you can see the volume of this chamber is approximately 1 is to 20,000 millimeter cube. Uh, so, if you count the number of bacteria using a phase contrast microscope, uh, because the bacterial cells are going to reflect the cells, uh, reflect the light and uh, because of that you can actually be able to use the phase contrast microscope to see the bacterial cells. So, you cannot be able to see the bacterial cell, but what you can see is a dust, dust like particles into the, into the cover slip and these dust like particles are going to be moving. So, that is how actually it will say that these are not dust, but the bacterial cells. And uh, for example, so when you count the number of cells, how you are going to uh, calculate the number of bacteria which are present. So, for example, uh, if you, if each chamber has 8 bacteria, for example, so it has actually a chamber like this. So, what you have to do is you have to count in each of these chambers the number of bacteria present ok. So, if you count the number of bacteria and suppose in this you have the 8 number of bacteria then you multiply that number to the uh, to the to this number which is actually a conversion factor or the number of bacteria which is if you want to convert it into do, to the number of bacteria per ml and the number what you are going to get is 1.68 into 10 to the power 8 bacteria. So, uh, if you have a very high number or a very low number because if you count very little or if you count very high there is a chance that you your counting may not be correct. So, in those cases what you have to do is if it is a very high number uh, you might have to dilute the bacteria and you can do a serial dilution and then you can do this diluted uh, solution you can use for counting the media. If it is a very low number then what you have to do is you have to concentrate this number and you have to use the concentrated number and you have to use the more volume so that the number of bacteria present in each chamber should be optimal so that the your counting should be statistically significant and you should make the less number of errors. Let us move on to the next. So, in the next what you have is a plate counting method. In the plate counting method what you need is you need a agar plate so that where you are going to plate the bacterial cells or we, where you are going to plate the, uh, bact uh, the bacteria which is present in the liquid culture and then uh, also what you need is the colony counter or the uh, instrument what is the called as colony counter. So, let us discuss first the method and then we will discuss about the colony counter. 
So, in this method what you have is a defined volume of bacterial culture, it could be uh, 10 microliter, 30 microliter, uh, it could be 50 microliter. So, there is no uh, hard and fast rule that you cannot take any volume you like, it depends on the two condition that the, the amount of bacteria what you plate should give you the sufficient number of colonies so that the when you do a counting, uh, you, it, it should be statistically significant. So, if it is too low, you can actually go for the higher volumes. If it is too high, then you can go either to the lower number or you can do a serial dilution uh, of the concentrated stock and uh, you can do the uh, counting using the colony counter. Because if it is giving too many colonies, then in, it is possible that the two colonies, uh, you have the two colonies very nearby, but you will count this as one colony. And in other cases, it could be possible that you only have a couple of colonies and these colonies may not be statistically significant to give you the real number. So, what you have to do is, uh, you have to take a defined amount of bacterial culture and then it, it you plate those cultures into a solid support media, so that these bacteria will grow and they will give you the colonies. As it like we have uh, discussed here, so what you do is you take the uh, 100 microliter of bacteria, put it onto the plate and then let them grow for another uh, 16 hours uh, and that actually will give you the individual colonies and then what you do is you take this plate and put it into the colony counter and colony counter is actually a instrument where you have a place uh, to keep the plate and below you have a light source and on the top you have a lens. So, it is actually having a magnifying lens. So, because of that you could be able to see the two colonies which even if they are very, very close by, you could be able to see them separately. So, with the help of the lens, you could be able to uh, count each and every individual colonies. Now, let us move on to the next method. So, so next method is called as the serial dilution method. So, in the serial dilution method, uh, uh, Serial dilution method is actually where you your original stock will be plated on a solid media and the number of colonies can be counted with the colony counter. Okay? Uh, a manual colony counter has lamp at the bottom, a grid to provide the bacterial culture plate and a magnifying glass to visualize and count the single colonies. Okay? Uh, in this particular type of colony counter, a, 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 a colony number of 30 to 300 can be used to determine the number of bacteria present in a original stock. So, what happen in a plate counting method, uh, the when you have a very high concentrated stock of bacteria, uh, the number of colonies what you get is beyond this number, means you are getting thousands of colonies and the other problem is that the two colonies are merging to each other and that is how you are could not be able to distinguish whether it is a single colony or it is a double colony. So, in those cases this concentrated stock has to be uh, the uh, you have to dilute and this dilution uh, uh, you uh, this, di, uh, this uh, di, dilution you have to do in a serial dilution method. So, in the serial dilution method what you have to do is first you take a original stock for example, in this case we have taken a 100 microliter uh, uh, and added it to the 1 ml. So, that actually is 1 is to 10 dilution. From this what we have done is we have taken a, a 1 ml and then it we have again added to the uh, another 1 ml. And then finally, you can take from here and make another dilution that will give you 1 is to 1000 dilution and then from here you can make another dilution that will give you 1 is to 10,000 dilutions and so on. And from then ultimately what you do is you take the 100 microliter of the each ml and each uh, from each of these uh, uh, culture which is diluted of 1 is to 10, 1 is to 100, 1 is to 1000 and 1 is to 10,000 or 1 is to 1 lakh thousand. Uh, and then you plate it onto the cell, okay? Uh, plate it onto the uh, onto the agar plate, 
and what will happen is all these will give you the colonies which you can count. So, this will give you the uh, number of colonies. So, what you can do is once the number comes in this range, you can take that particular plate and then how you can calculate the number of bacteria per ml? You can take this one number. So, the, what the number of colonies what you are going to get and this particular plate for example, if you got uh, the 300 colonies okay, and suppose you made the 1 is to 10,000 dilutions. Okay, so, then you can just multiply this number by the number of dilution what you have made. Okay, so, this will become 3 into 10 to the power 5 bacteria per ml. Similarly, if it is uh, the dilution, if you decrease, decrease the dilution, this number will go up or if you, in, if you, if you, uh, if you increase the dilutions, this number will go down, but this number will increase. So, ultimately you are, you can actually calculate the number of bacteria present in uh, one or two dilutions and that actually will give you the average number of bacteria which is present in this particular uh, solution what you have started from the beginning. Now, we will move on to the another method which is called as the turbidometric method. So, you know the bacterial cell is made up of, of uh, the bacterial cell is, is particulate in matter. So, when the bacteria is growing into the media, it actually gives the turbidity or it actually scatter the light. So, it is actually a object. So, if you can imagine that this is your bacteria. So, when the light will fall into this bacteria, it actually scatter the light in all the directions. Okay. So, that actually can be used in, so it, it is just like a dust particle. So, uh, because these cells are growing and these cells are alive, so what you and because, because they are scattering the light in all the direction, there is a loss of a loss of light when there is a loss of intensity when it when a particular light beam is for hitting the bacterial cell and it is actually getting lost because what you are measuring, you are measuring into the detector uh, this light whatever is coming out from the sample but it is it is uh, moving away on a particular angle which which your detector cannot detect so because of that if you are uh, making a light eye it it is actually becoming the uh, uh, if you um, hitting the light with the i0 it is becoming a light of i and that's uh, these differences of i wise versus i0 can be used to, the, to correlate the number of bacteria which are present in your solution. So, as you can see in this system which is actually a spectrophotometer, what you have is you have the, uh, what you are going to do is you take the bacteria into a cuvette and on the parallel you will put the uh, blank. So, in this case you will put a blank. So, blank, what is the blank? Blank is going to be your media what you are using. Uh, for the uh, for culturing this bacteria and uh, you put the media as a blank and then you put the bacteria as a, a growing bacteria into the other cuvette and then you collect the absorbance or the scattering of these cells at 660 nanometer or any any wavelength which is bigger to this number because if you go anything beyond uh, 660 number the you can be able to measure the scattering uh, of the cells uh, and then the, the the number what you get is actually the uh, you are measuring the scattering or the turbidity of the uh, solution and that actually can be correlated to the number of bacteria which is present in this solution. The next method is that you can use the nitrogen content. So, you know that the bacterial cell is made up of, of different types of biomolecules and in the previous lecture what we have discussed, we have discussed that the bacterial cell is made up of, of um, the uh, proteins um, made up of a carbohydrate, DNA, RNA and the lipids and the protein is made up of, of uh, so the protein is made up of, of amino acids. And amino acid means it contains the uh, um, uh, amino, amino group. Okay, so this means the uh, the nitrogen. And apart from this, the DNA or the RNA also contain 
the the uh, the uh, nitrogen because they have the uh, the uh, purine or pyrimidine bases and these purine and pyrimidine bases are containing the nitrogen and apart from that the some of the other biomolecules also are present which are also containing the nitrogen so if you would like to count the number of bacteria in a given uh, given culture media what you can do is you can calculate the amount of nitrogen which is present which uh, that is actually going to be uh, co uh, correlating to the number of bacteria which is present in the uh, in that particular media because the nitrogen is the the cell bound nitrogen is going to be indirectly say that these are the number of bacteria present in the solution similarly you can also do the dry weight or the wet weight so what is the difference between the wet weight and the dry weight is suppose you are culturing the bacteria in a vial okay and you have the number of bacteria okay so what you can do is you spin these bacteria and the, when you spin it actually will give you a pellet of bacteria okay now what you can do is so these are these are the wet wet bacteria now what you do is you you dry them okay so that actually will give you a powder the bacterial powder and this is actually the dry bacteria so if you can got that this dry powder you can actually weigh this bacteria uh, using the weighing machine and then you can say that these many milligrams of bacteria per ml of culture volume and that is also a standard way of uh, comparing the two solutions so you it, it, it uh, whether it is a dry method or the nitrogen content method that is not going to give you the absolute number because you don't have a reference point but these are the uh, proper these are the methods which people use to compare the number of bacteria present in two different samples so suppose you are actually over expressing a particular protein or suppose you are trying to uh, uh, receive a particular type of metabolites okay and in that case suppose you are modulating the uh, the media compositions and trying to see if that actually going to support the uh, bacterial growth or not in those kind of studies you can actually use the nitrogen content method or the dry as well as the wet method okay so dry method is actually more superior compared to the wet method because the wet matter is having a liquid part which is actually the media part and that actually could vary from batch to batch and because of that it may give you the uh, some kind of artifacts compared to that you the dry powder dry method is going to give you the consistent result if you do from batch to batch so these are the different methods what people can use to monitor the growth of the particular bacteria in a culture volume or in a particular media uh, let's uh, discuss further that how the bacteria will growing in a particular media and what are the different phases it which go through so that when a bacteria grows in a particular media it has to go through with the different phases and these and then only it replicates and increase its number so these are the so what are these phases as you can see in this particular graph one is called the first one is called as the lag phase the other one is called as the exponential growth phase uh, uh, this is called this is also called as the log phase then you have the stationary growth phase then you have the rapidly declining phase and then you have the death phase so as you can see log of number of bacteria the versus the hours and what you can see is that it has a, a lag phase then it has the log phase then it has the stationary phase and then ultimately it has a decline phase as well as the death phase so let's discuss these phases and the relevance of these phases as uh, in com in uh, context to the uh, uh, to the media components as well as the compositions so the first is called lag phase 
as the name suggests lag phase means the bacteria will is 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 not going to uh, bacteria will lag in terms of its growth which means it is not going to grow very rapidly and during this phase what is the most important thing is that bacteria get adjusted to the new media which means uh, uh, if you are taking a bacteria from a rich source or if you are ta suppose taking a bacteria from the lb media and if you are putting it into the m9 media and you know that the lb media is a rich media whereas the m9 minimal media is not that rich media the bacteria will normally been acclimatized to the lb media but it is not acclimatized to the uh, the uh, the the nutrient source or nutrients which are present in the m9 source so because of that it has to get adjusted okay but it is not true that if you do the reversal like for example if you are growing a bacteria in a m9 media and then you add it add those bacteria to the lb media there will be no lag phase there will be still be lag phase because the bacteria has uh, adopted the biochemical reactions according to the m9 media but now you have put it into a rich media which is called the lb media so uh, once it reached to the lb media it may not require those uh, uh, those uh, biochemical uh, uh, reactions which it was running in the m9 media it may we just shut down those uh, biochemical uh, uh, reactions and because the in the m9 media it may not be getting those uh, particular type of uh, biomolecules and because of that it needs to be synthesized those biomolecule when it is present in the m9 media but once it reaches to the lb media it does not require to run those uh, biosynthetic pathways to synthesize those essential uh, molecules so as a result it has to shut down and that actually requires the adaptation uh, uh, if, and that is how it is actually going to have a lag phase. So, lag phase is always going to be there as long as you put the bacteria from one media to another media irrespective of that whether you put the media from, from rich media to um, uh, uh, the defined media or from the uh, less rich media to, to high, uh, more rich media. What happen is in this media, uh, so once you adapt, you actually will avoid to go for dividing the cells because the division starts once only that bacteria is happy and bacteria got adjusted to the particular type of uh, conditions. In this, con in this particular phase, what a bacteria will do? Bacteria will synthesize the most crucial amino enzymes or the coenzymes which are present in traces which means the if the media is not providing some of those biomolecules then it actually going to start synthesizing those biomolecules then why it is doing so because it has to optimize the growth and as well as the conditions which are required for growth and multiplication in addition the the cells are going to be metabolically very active and it will be busy in synthesizing large amount of protoplasm which means the cell will grow in size but it will not grow in numbers. So at the end of this phase the each bacterial cell will divide and enter into the next phase of active multiplication which is actually called as the log phase which means in this particular phase the, uh, the uh, bacteria will uh, only going to adjust to the new new environment okay whether it is a rich environment or whether it is going to be a poor uh, growth conditions. When you have the uh, rich environment, the log phase is going to be, lag phase is going to be smaller. If it is a poor conditions, the lag phase may be uh, going to be higher. So, the length of lag phase actually defines whether the, back, the media compositions are actually uh, supporting the growth or actually uh, whether they are uh, causing the some kind of stress to the cells because if it is more lengthy which means the media some of the media components uh, might not be supporting the growth of this particular bacteria and that is why the bacteria is taking more time for adaptations. Now let us go to the log phase. So the log phase is in this phase the bacterial population is involved in active division and the whole cell population is more or less homogeneous in terms of chemical compositions, 
physiology and metabolic activity. Uh, in this particular time, uh, log, log bacterial number of colonies versus time is actually in proportion, which means if it is, uh, if you count, if you count the number of bacteria, the bacteria cells replicates very, uh, very rapidly and uh, that is because the bacterial cells are uh, increasing at a constant rate and it continues. So, the log phase, how long the log phase will continue until the media components are uh, providing the nutrition. So, once, uh, so once the bacteria got adjusted into the log lag phase, then it will do a rapid uh, growth during the log phase or the exponential growth phase and it will continue until the bacteria uh, will be keep getting the substrate molecules or the nutrients from the media. Once this phase is over or the bacteria will reach to the end of the log phase, then the media components are not going to give you, give them the enough nutrients and that is how they will enter into the next phase which is called as the stationary phase. So, the now, so in the, uh, in the log phase, the number of bacteria which are going to give, grow is more and that is why uh, compared to the number of bacteria which are going to die then that is why the number of bacteria are, the number is increasing in proportion to the, the, to the time. Now, once the, the nutrients are limiting because once the bacteria will grow, it will use up all the nutrients and that actually will be used to increase the number. Uh, it, it is eventually going to uh, deplete the nutrients which are present in the, uh, in the, in the, in the media and, and that is how the substrate is going to be limiting and then it actually enters into the stationary phase and uh, which means it actually going to maintain the number of bacteria into the media which means the number of bacteria which will be uh, going to grow is equal to the number of bacteria which are going to go for the death phase which means the number of bacteria which are going to uh, reproduce the number of bacteria are going to die and because of that and why that is required because the number of bacteria which are going to die they will actually going to release the nutrients and these nutrients are going to be used by the remaining bacteria for their growth and that is how this cycle will continue which means the older bacteria will die and they will release the nutrients and that nutrient is going to be used by the new uh, bacteria and that actually will give you the uh, stationary phase which means the number of number of bacteria in a colony will remain constant. That is what is written here that the population of the bacteria colony will remain constant. Okay, uh, because the number of division are going to be equal to the number of death events. As substrate is limiting the death of old cell, the death of old cell provides enough nutrients for the remaining cells to grow and multiply to maintain the constant number. Which uh, now, once the, uh, this arrangement that the death of older bacteria will provide the nutrient for the new bacteria will not be also support the growth of these bacteria, then they will go into the decline phase or the death phase. That is what is written here, once the, deaths, once the substrates are not sufficient, the cells will start dying and they will enter into the death phase. So, in the death phase, you are going to have the more deaths compared to the multiplication or the division. And as a result, what will happen is the number of bacteria is going to decline very sharply into the media and uh, eventually what you will see is that there is no bacteria which is growing in this particular micro environment. So, uh, this is about the growth of the bacteria in a growth of a particular bacteria in a given media and uh, suppose uh, let us, if you summarize what will happen is that if they are going through a binary phase, 
binary division okay then what is mean by binary division is suppose we started with the one number of bacteria okay then once they will complete one cycle uh, or the one round of multiplication the bacteria will become 2 the bacteria will become 4 bacteria will become 8 another 16 32 64 and so on and the time in which the bacteria will take uh, will grow from one bacteria to two bacteria is called as the generation time or the generation number uh, so in first generation the one bacteria is going to get converted into two bacteria if you have two generations then it becomes four if it's three generation it becomes eight and if I count the number of bacteria which is present then it will be if it is second generation then it is going to be 2 to power 2 if it is third generation it is 2 to power 3 that is what you see 2 to power 3 is 8 actually and if it is 4 then 2 to power 4 2 to power 5 2 to power 6 so you can imagine if you have to count the number of bacteria in nth generation then it will be 2 to the power n which means uh, if you take this into the equation form the number of bacteria will be 1 into 2 to the power n okay so suppose you started with the number of bacteria which is n0 and you want to calculate the number of bacteria which is uh, which going to be after the 10th generation then the n is equal to n0 into 2 to the power n generations 2 to the power n and if you put the log then it becomes log n equal to log n0 plus n log 10 2 which means if you simplify and, and calculate this equation it becomes n equal to 3.3 .3 log 10 n minus log 10 n0 and where this n is the number of generations and the n is the total number of bacteria and n0 is the starting bacteria or the the number of bacteria what you have inoculated into the media what is the application of this particular kind of equation this particular kind of equation has a application that it actually allows you to calculate the number of bacteria after uh, after a certain time for example uh, if I have inoculated a bacteria at 10 am in the morning and I want to know that how many bacteria will be there in when I would like to uh, uh, take out the media at 10 pm which means actually it is 12 hours. So this actually I can do because if I have a bacteria which is of 20 minutes as a life cycle okay, which means in 12 hours how many cycles? 12 into 60 divided by 20 which is actually 36 generations okay so the if you put the 36 into n okay then you can be able to calculate the number of bacteria what you are going to have at 10 pm what we have discussed that the uh, uh, different types of multiplication modes what is present in the prokaryotic system we have also discussed the different types of techniques as well as the methods to uh, to measure the bacterial growth and then at the end we have also discussed about the different phases through which the bacterial cycle bacterial cell goes through and attain uh, uh, do the uh, do the growth within the media so as we said it is actually following a uh, uh, lag phase, log phase, stationary phase as well as the death phase and most of these phases are having its own significance in terms of uh, its application or in terms of their uh, utility to exploit the microbial cells and uh, uh, so with this we would like to conclude our lecture here and in our subsequent lecture what we are going to discuss we are going to discuss about the uh, the uh, uh, transforming agents and now we have already discussed about the host and its metabolism as well as the other kind of parameters so in the subsequent uh, 
lectures what we are going to discuss about how you can actually isolate a particular gene from the host so that you can use that gene to generate the chimeric um, uh, genetically modified organisms and how that gene can be manipulated to uh, generate the novel class of transforming agents and what are the different types of transforming agents are available for our biotechnology related applications. Thank you.